I might be able to deal with this one. This is my dude. I know I'm going to like his little tracks. So, bro, knowing what we do, man, when we kick the podcast off, we normally just go through uh, Epidemic Sound. Shout out to Epidemic Sound. Um, they're not sponsoring me. I'm hoping that one day they'll actually call me and actually sponsor me. But um, we just go through a couple of tunes, man, and try to find something to bring the podcast into. And I think that we found it, man. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this thing off, man. What's up, everybody, man? It's your boy, Chester. back for another episode of the What You Mean Podcast, man. We're here for another What's New segment where in the month of June, you know that we have dedicated um, actually um, our, our June What's New segments to some dope fathers and some dope mentors and just some people that are playing roles in our kids' life that you probably wouldn't know. Case in point, our guest that we are rolling with on today, man. So if you're tuned in right now, man, you're in for a treat, man. Again, I'm your host, LaChester, man. And here on the platform today, we have... Justin Lockett, man. I, I'm glad that you brought me here, man. I couldn't be more excited to come and, and talk about such an important subject as these young people in our community and how we stand in the gap. That's what it is, man. So, you know, how we do, you know, and, and, and for those of you that are wondering where Kim is, she she has some stuff to pop up, man. But, you know, we shout out to Kim and, you know, we're doing this for her. So shout out in the comments, drop some hearts for her in the comments, you know what I'm saying? Whatever y'all want to do for her or whatever the case may be. So, again, uh, we have Justin Lockett here. Uh, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit of the backstory, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so to simply like sum it up on how we know each other. So we went to Troy together. Uh, we were kind of, I won't say that we were enemies. We kind of sort of were just on two ends of the spectrum. Uh, however, after the case, after the fact, we did find out that there are a lot of things we actually have in common and people that we had in common, but, uh, that's neither here nor there. You know what I'm saying? The backstory is we both went to Troy University. Uh, Justin ended up pledging, uh, five eighty sigma fraternity incorporated. I had the pleasure of being his Dean of pledge, uh, throughout that process and bringing him into our graduate chapter in Troy. Uh, Alabama, and that was kind of sort of when we kind of bridged that little gap that I was telling you guys about. And one of those gaps that uh, I was able to learn about in getting to know him was his um, his foundation. And his foundation plays a humongous role in the community of Huntsville, uh, as well as serving, I think, the Madison area as well uh, in terms of what he does and, and what he contributes. So I know that with me being the age that I am, the relationships that I've been in and all this other good stuff, I don't have any kids right now. But I know that there have been some vital roles that I've played in my life and my time that have definitely made a difference. Uh, so even though biologically I don't have any kids, I do feel like I've necessarily played a role in, in certain kids' life that helped to form it or mold it into something that trans, uh, you know, inspired them to be what they are. So with that being said, man, we're going to go ahead and kick it off. And I just want you to just take a minute and kind of sort of let the people know, like, who you are, you know what I'm saying, where you're from, what you got going. You can give them the backstory on your foundation and kind of sort of let us know the direction that your foundation is going in right now. All right. Well, I'm Justin Lockett from Huntsville, Alabama. And so I appreciate what you started saying about the foundation, but it was my brother, right? So I really wasn't working in the community the way that I am now until he was killed. Right. Right. So he was killed in 2012, right before he was supposed to graduate from college. And at that moment, you start to look at life different, right? Realize that, damn, you know, mortality is real. Like I can really be out of here at any moment to right. see him go at 23. So a lot of things that probably used to be important to me are not important to me. And things that I didn't really think about, I think about more now. Right. And so what we started doing was speaking out against gun violence, visiting kids at the school. And then so long or, along the way, I started thinking, can I do more? Right. So then I created a mentoring program called the League of Legacy. It's created in my brother's legacy for who he was, what he stood for in the community, how he worked with kids, his love for sports, his love for academics. And we wanted to work with these young men to build them up, to say, listen, young black boy, hold your head up. You're handsome. You're capable. Right. You're smart. You can accomplish anything and you become anything that you want to become. Right. right. And so I wanted to start putting in front of them people that are doing the things that they want to become so that we can start 
getting them to go positive ways. A lot right. of times, if we don't give these kids somebody to look up to, they're going to find it, and it might not be the best place. I, 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 and, I, and I get that, man. I, and I, I like, so currently, like uh, today, like you had to give us a rough amount of number. Like, how many kids are you servicing right now? Directly, it's about 16. Okay. But indirectly, that number can always go up. Gotcha. Right? Because I might show up to visit one young man, and there may be 5, 10, 15. And I talk to them. I might get their phone numbers. They might not come directly into the program, but they have contacted me. Gotcha. And then not only that, just because people know who I am, they're watching. Right. right. So indirectly, I still have to be aware of what I'm doing and the decisions I make because they pay attention. Gotcha, gotcha, and that's understood, man. And I think that's what's so awesome about you know this setting and, and this podcast is simply because, like, you know, how do you how do you explain that you know to the overall person that at the end of the day, like, I know like certain people look at us when we don't biologically have kids and they be like, you know, what I'm saying you like a grandparent almost, like mm-hmm. you can go pick them up, you know, talk to them, hang out with them, feed them candy, ice cream all day, then you drop them back off, and then the real parents got to deal with them at the end of the day. But I think the one mutual thing that you and I can probably agree that we do share overall when it comes to whoever we're mentoring or we allow in our circle and we're actually worried about them on a day-to-day basis and, and hoping that they're okay is that at the end of the day, I'm still going to go back to the thing that I said initially. It's a great thing to have kids, you know what I'm saying? And I do consider it a blessing, you know what I'm saying? But for us to involve ourselves the way that we involve ourselves with some people, children, bro, mm-hmm. that has a stand and it has to matter for something. Like Because, you know, you've hired me to work for you before when you took the kids to the museum. So I seen how you interact with them. I seen how they respect you, you know what I'm saying? I see how they care. They said, I mean, they showed up with khakis on. They showed up with all the same shirt on. They, was, they had their uh, shirts tucked in. They had their belts on. Like, mm-hmm. they knew how to carry themselves. And I didn't really see, and, and, it, and it was a lot of smart kids in, in the group, too, as well, you know what I'm saying? So I just, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that I utilized the platform for the Father's Day month to, to highlight the fact that you don't have to have to biologically have a, co- uh, a kid mm-hmm. in order to say that you're being a father or a father figure to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So. And a lot of times people, they think because they see, hey, you picked them up and y'all went and got a burger, they think that's all it is. A lot of these kids in my program don't have men in their life at all. Some do. Some may have their fathers inconsistently. And it's not here to say that I want to replace their father. Right. right? Your father is your father. Right. Right. But when you have kids that are going through puberty and, you know, they're dealing with anger issues and peer pressure and all these different things and they call you and they need to have conversations or they're aggressive towards their mothers or they're aggressive towards others or they're being bullied or they're having suicidal thoughts. These are real things that these kids face. And the first person they think to call is me. Right. And so no matter what time it is to be able to pull up and talk to them and them knowing that, no matter what, you got their back, and they know that you're sincere. Right. It means the world to me because so many of us can get to a place where you can think back, if I would have had somebody that would have took just a little bit of time with me and tell me this or show me this or even going to the other end, teaching them how the value of a dollar, right. teaching them how to balance a checkbook, teaching them you know, how to pull up their pants a certain way, how to wash their bodies, how to right. comb their hair, things that – a lot of times, sometimes their moms can't give them. And when they're dealing with a single mom that's working two, three jobs, and they're at the house by themselves. Well, right. like a lot of people say, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Mm-hmm. These kids is, okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Oh, then they see that guy out there. He's not making good decisions, but who else do I look up to? So I'm going to follow him, right? And so I used to have this thing, and I said, it's a difference between being the man and being a man. Right. right? And I wanted to, to get them to, to see that. And so... That's what's so important to me. And it brings me back to when those who killed my brother went off to prison. I had to think, this family is losing just like we lost. Even though we lost my brother to the cemetery, they're losing their kids to the penitentiary. Right. Right. And so it's like, how do we start? We always talk about how to keep kids from falling victim to gun violence. Well, I feel like a victim is somebody who picks up a gun and wants to hurt you because of the shoes on your feet or the name brand on your shirt, or just because you looked at them the wrong way, we got to kill all that. Right. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Like, it's, it's, it's it, the times we, the times we living in, bro, it's definitely essential. Uh, I, I want to, you know, piggyback and, and kind of, you know, go back to the fact, like, you know, with 
with me and my relationship with my dad, like with my mom, um, I used to stay with my grandmom a lot. And a lot of people, I think, especially like my mom's siblings, they think that my mom wasn't a good mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't never that my mom wasn't a good mom. It was just if me and my sister had a preference on where we wanted to be at, we wanted to be at grandma's house. Mm -hmm. That's just how it was. And my grandma was just that type of grandma that if we wanted to be down there, she felt like being bothered, we would be down there. So I remember one day, uh, you know, my dad used to drive this like little red and black little Ranger little truck or whatever. And I knew it when I seen it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, he, he rolled down through past my grandma's house one day and we was out in the yard playing and I flagged him down and he stopped and um, asked him what he was finna do and he was like, I finna go get my hair cut. Mm. And I was like, man, can I go with you? And he was like, yeah. So he like, go let your grandma know you finna leave with me. So my grandma came out, seen I was getting in the truck with him, went down there. Now you gotta keep in mind, bro, like it's me seeing my father is like maybe once, twice, every blue moon, you know what I'm saying? Uh, might go stay with his baby sisters, my aunts during the summertime. And that's how I stayed in contact with that side of my family. And then uh, on top of that, I said this on the podcast before, like I played football from the age of four up to I was 21. You know what I'm saying? On every level I played on, I've never sat behind anybody for real. I've always started. So my parents coming to watch me play, you were coming to watch me play, not show support of the team because you're, <laughs> you're a son on the sideline, you know, type deal. So it was, it was you know, all of these things running through my head. So I'm like, I ain't seen my dad in a long time. So he, um, we went down there, got our haircuts or whatever case may be. And I'm thinking after we get our haircuts, you know what I'm saying? You ain't seen me in so long. The least we can do is go get a hamburger or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Talk a little bit, catch up, whatever case may be. But, you know, he gave me $200, put $200 in my pocket, took me back to my grandma and dropped me off at my grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? And when he dropped me off, I was crying. Mm -hmm. So my grandma walked up on me. She she was like, boy, why you crying? And like, it was, you know how grandmama's is. She was holding me by my arms. Like, check, like, what, what the hell wrong with you type deal? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, my daddy don't love me. I don't wanna be with me. She said, your daddy grown and your daddy gonna be who he wanna be. Don't cry over your daddy no more. And from that day forward, I didn't cry with my dad again until mm -hmm. my dad had a master stroke. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't cry anymore. No like, I understood what my relationship, my grandma instilled in me at that moment that this is what your relationship is going to be with your dad so, unless somebody changes. You know what I'm saying? Now, I decided I want a relationship with my dad and I changed that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I, I'm saying all that to say, like, those little things that you just said, they matter, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just had two of the kids that used to fall on me when I was doing the youth ministry thing, you know what I'm saying? They stay in contact with me. They're in college now, they grown, bro. Mm -hmm. But whenever they in the city, you know what I'm saying? They hit me up, you know what I'm saying? And yesterday we was hanging out or whatever the case may be. And you know, we rolled around a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I went and got some food and, and I was like, hey, I gotta head back to the house and do this cause I gotta edit or whatever the case may be. And they, just, they were just sitting in the car and they just burned out all of a sudden. They was like, man, you gonna be a good ass dad. I was like, what you mean? It was like, you just ran a whole itinerary of everything we finna do and all the stops we gonna make before we get back to the house just to make sure that we straight, you know what I'm saying? And then they just start running this checklist of everything that I've been at, like like you. like I don't have as many as you had, you know what I'm saying? But if my youth parents called me and told me something that was going on, bro, mm -hmm. I was there. Graduations, no ceremonies, crossing any high school fraternities, Whatever it was, proms, it didn't matter. If they called me and told me it was going on, I made sure that they seen my face there because I wanted them to know that somebody cared. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's why I commend you on everything that you've done with your foundation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate the basis on which it was built. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, that's that was the rose out of the concrete, yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, that hard process of what you have to relive and deal with that, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. on a day to base. The thing, one thing that came out of that and blossomed was the fact that you're willing to give back to whoever you can embrace mm -hmm. within your reach to make sure that they don't have to go through that or necessarily feel that, you know what I'm saying? So again, you know what I'm saying, fun of what you mean podcast and all about audience here, we, we definitely commend you on that. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. And it's, it's crazy how God can shake you up to get your attention and, right. and how he did that. And I you know you mentioned that you don't, as many kids, to me, whether it's one, two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, 10, 15, 20, whatever, if you make an impact in one person's life, then you did your job. And that's where it used to be when we came up, it used to say it takes a village. Right. right? I feel like in a lot of ways we got away from that. 
It used to be, you know, you see this kid over here who's not doing what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Somebody jumped in and we took care of him right. until somebody else, hey, hey, where your mama at? Get in trouble two, three right. times. But a lot of times we don't do that. It's, we're going to videotape it. We're going to joke. Hey, man, look at that little kid over there. No, no, no. Stand up and say what he's doing is wrong or what he's doing is right. Commend him for something that he does right. We don't do enough of that, right? Young man, it's good that you held that door open for her. It's good that you said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, sir, yes, sir, right? That's good. And I feel like a lot of times we highlight bad behavior, but we don't highlight good behavior enough, especially to these young kids. And another thing that I carry with me that older people don't think about is I told that boy, well, sometimes it ain't always about telling them. It's showing them. Right. Kids is going to do what they see. Right. right? You can tell them till the cows come home, don't do this. But if you're doing it, they're going to do what you're doing. Right. Right. So I try to make sure, I'm not perfect, but I try my best to do the right things because I know these kids is watching me. And then on the flip side, one thing you talk about is as we grow up, as we evolve, I wasn't perfect. I did a lot of stupid shit in my life, right? <laughs> but sitting in front of kids who look up to you and see you a certain way, sometimes you get in front of the mirror, it's like, man, am I really living the things that I'm telling them? It, it, it forces you to grow up inside yourself, keep it real with yourself, and be like, man, you know what? I need to be the man that they think I am. I need to be the man that they see, right? And so a lot of times people commend me for what I do for them, but they don't realize grieving my brother and a lot of things that I've gone through, these kids have saved my life. Right. right? People wow. don't think about it like wow. that. Right? Wow. It's the love they give me, the way they look up to me, that's kept me from doing stupid things. That's kept me from going out seeking revenge when we was going through that process and knowing these kids is out here in the street. These kids have saved my life in a lot of ways. Right. Right. And so I try to make sure that I'm always there. Even the car that I just pulled up in, I bought that from one of my former mentees. Right. He's now a car salesman. And he told me he was down. He wasn't selling a car. We walked around a lot. And I just bought a car. Right. <laughs> but I bought a car. For, I mean, just think about that. I met him at 14, helped him grow up. And then one of the biggest deals he sold was from his... That's that's what you're supposed to do. Right, right, right Continue right. showing up and supporting and saying, man, you know what? I'm always going to be present, just like you mentioned, presence. These kids will show up, whether it's the prom, a football game, a basketball game. When they look in the stands and they're able to, there's Mr. Justin, right? I got your back no matter what. You can call me, right? Well, I think you, it don't matter, right? I'm going to answer my phone for you. Right. I might not answer the phone for them. Right. I'm going to answer the phone for you. Right. Right. So, so, so. I'm, I'm gonna switch gears just a tad bit, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that there's definitely some things that's holding you on NDA that we can't really discuss on home <laughs> platform, whatever the case may be. And uh, but I do know that some people that if they do follow you, then they know kind of so like you said, people know who you are. So we have seen you on TV before. We have seen that you're starting to go kind of sort of you know slightly viral on you know certain <laughs> TikToks and certain Instagram stuff and stuff like that. So. You know, with that being happening and you keeping your the, the the man that you want for your mentees to make sure that they can watch and also know that it, 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 this is something that you want and you can become, uh, let's just say tomorrow that you blow, man. Like, what are your plans to try to keep, you know, legal legacy in the perspective that it's in so that they're still getting the attention that they need and that the uh, foundation can continue to just, you know, thrive? Well, that's a good question. Um, last year when I went away, mm -hmm. I had interns college interns, right? That's a beautiful thing. Then some of the kids, as they get older, 18, 19, 20, 21, they are so appreciative of what they got that they help. Gotcha. Right? So now what's happening is I'm becoming the older guy, right? So I got a lot of guys that's in college, in grad school. And so I'm having people that are now taking the role. So my, I can continue to oversee and I can continue to show up. And if they need to call me, they can. But now I have more guys that are now in position that can help me if I'm not able to be present physically, but they know emotionally and everything else, I'm always going to be there. That's what's up, man. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that, bro. You know, a lot of people, uh, when they start to, you know, come into their own or, or come into, you know, start reaping those seeds that they, they sold, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They start to forget about the soil that they laid mm -hmm. the seeds in. You know what I'm saying? That's true. If that makes sense. So I just know, again, you know, with us both, you know, agreeing, on the fact of how important presence are for for 
for men to just be mm-hmm. in, you know what I'm saying, especially little boys' life, you know what I'm saying, yeah. uh, that, you know, I know if somebody's tapping in right now because they are just a listener of the What You Mean podcast or they got wind that you were on it and they coming to check it out, that they will definitely want to be like, okay, what's going to happen? Because, yeah, I, I think with you, bro, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, I don't, I, I remember telling your LB, sorry, I told him this, uh, uh maybe three years ago uh, when I seen the avenue that Legal Legacy was going down. Mm-hmm. I was like, Justin going to be in politics and he not going to even know it. And mm-hmm. then he laughed. And I was like, bro, like, just look at how he carries himself. Look at what he's doing. Look at the people he's shaking hands with. Look at the people he rubbing shoulders with. I was like, before soon, before long, somebody in the Huntsville area going to be rubbing his shoulder and telling him that he need to run for certain office. And that's what's going to start at. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. That's, and that's what I told SARS three years ago. You know what I'm saying? But, but again, you know, we were able to share some conversation prior to this, you know, so what you sharing the light on, you know, how you see your life going and the career path that, that you're choosing that you want. I just know that that alone, bro, that would make the kids. It's, it's some about being able to bro know that I can pick my phone up and call somebody or know that I got access to them. Yes. Like for example, bro, like a lot of people don't know the backstory of me and you know what I'm saying? Like, me man may not be as close as we used to be, but at one point in time, bro, like that was like my homie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was the host of everything in Troy. He showed up one day. I wasn't the host no more. Mm-hmm. But he knew me because if I was doing it proudly, and then if he couldn't make it, I was the one who was still feeling. And when I moved up here to Birmingham, that's who I was hanging with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and I and I joked with him about this the you know a uh, couple couple years ago. And, you know, because he had, was working at the radio station, starting to make a name for himself. Everything that he was doing was starting to blow up. And then I called him one day because I heard him on the radio. And I just wanted to call him and tell him, like, boy, you was acting up on the radio. And when I called him, the number didn't work. Oh, wow. And then so I wrote him on I wrote him on Facebook. And I was like, bro, you changed your number? And he was like, yeah. And then he sent me another number, but it was a dummy number, like the like the like like my trap phone number, mm-hmm. you know, my business phone number. Like it ain't my personal number, but it's a number I can still get notifications or whatever case on. And um, I had called him and it didn't go through. And I and I reached back out to him and I was like, I said, man, I, I would never ask you for anything. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want nothing from you. But it means something to me personally because of the type of relationship that we didn't have that I can pick up the phone and text you and be like, bro, I seen you on TV, bro, that was fire, bro, I'm exactly. proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, I heard you on the such and such, such, such that was fire. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro, that video, it was straight, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, for but because of the type of relationship we had prior to now, mm-hmm. like, I feel like I should have access to mm-hmm. be able to tell you that. You see what I'm exactly. saying? So I'm using that as an example to say that when you do blow up, you know what I'm saying, and when everything else does fall in place for you, them kids that you help, it's going to mean something to them for them to be like, yeah, man, that's my mentor. Like, I can probably FaceTime right now and he'll pick the phone up. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to mean a whole lot to them, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it, and, it, and, and again, I, and I don't use that aspect when I don't talk to certain women. Like, I done told them, like, it ain't so much about what we doing for each other and like that. Sometimes it's just appeasing to me to know that I got access to you, mm-hmm. that I can pick the phone up and call and check on you and make sure that you're okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't got to be nothing more than that. So that access means a lot as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that everything just the stars align for you, bro, so you can dump a crap load of money into Legal Legacy, bro. Like, it's a whole, like, machine just it's just going, like, and it's producing results to the point where you got data now that's keeping up with these are the kids who enter my program. This, this is the percentage of them that graduated from high school. This is the percentage of them that got bachelor degrees. This is the percentage of them that got master's degrees. You this will be in position to pay for them to go to school. See right? what I'm talking about? That type of stuff, because a lot of people is like, I want to get famous. I want. I have never had any desire to be famous, right? I wanted a larger platform so that I can continue to share the things that we do. And a lot of people get it twisted because they're like, oh man, how does it feel to get a lot of attention? I'd be like, you think I get a lot of? I don't, because I don't see it that way, right? Right. I'm literally just seeing it as I'm silly as hell in my real life. Mm-hmm. So then I started making TikToks and said, oh, y'all, y'all like these? I'm going to keep making them. <laughs> then I found out you can get paid for them. So it's like, well, let's keep doing them. <laughs> but at the same time, if, I, if my following grows and my followers are able to see, 
oh, he does this, and they get behind it, that's what I care more about, right? It's been plenty of women that be, man, I can't contact you, you're not available, this, but I guarantee you what? Let Javian, let Kanari, let Adrian, one of them pick up the phone, oh, everything's stopping, we answering. If I'm on, I've, some of these sets I've been on, oh, we answering the phone, and, hey, guys, look, this is ours, right? They come to my house, they got free room in my house, free refrigerator, if they need to hang out, whatever, they want to go to the gym, they want to shoot basketball, throw a football, go to Six Flags, whatever, we doing it because everything I'm doing, I'm doing it for them because if I can get through the door, I want to be known as that guy that put the ladder down so that we can all come up, not the one that got to the top and pulled it up. I mean, y'all need to figure out how to get up here. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to be the person that somehow, some way, I was able to open the door or get into a door, and then I brought everybody with me. That's what's that's, up, bro. You know, and that and that's 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 how I feel, bro. Like, shout out to my engineer in the room, like, bro. Like, he 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 got the accolades behind his name. He has the experience for what he knows he's capable of contributing to whatever platform he's contributing mm-hmm. to. You know what I'm saying? And he came into my studio, checked it out. You know what I'm saying? Gave me some pros, gave me some cons, gave gave me some advice. You know what I'm saying? But then he also told me like, this is what my ticket used to run for me to to do this for you. And I was like, bro, like. I don't know if I can even afford that right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it a book. And he was like, man, look, just tell me what you can do. We'll discuss it and go from there. You know what I'm saying? So we talked about it. We figured it out. You know what I'm saying? But it's, this is this is the key thing that I put in this offer. I said, if this podcast ever blows up or when it blows up and when it starts getting sponsorship, to go back to what you say, that's the floodgate. It's open. So all the stuff that we talked about initially, we need to come back and have another conversation about that. And he was like, it ain't about that. Like, it's about that to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, because people don't have to be nice to you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? People don't have to do nothing for you at all. So case in point, what you're saying about when I get to a certain point, you know what I'm saying? I want to be able to reach back. And it ain't so much about reaching back and helping him. It's just making sure that I'm reaching back and making sure that when it comes to me and the relationship I got with him, that he's straight. Mm-hmm. And that's a lesson within itself. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same aspect that you have with your kids, with your boys. Like, whatever you're doing and you reaching back and you helping, you know what I'm saying? Now they understand the concept of what they need to do when they get in your position. I need to reach back and help somebody else. Mm-hmm. What they tell us in church, each one, teach one, or mm-hmm. reach one, that's reach what one. real leadership is. Like, for real. Real leadership is you've done everything you can to build this studio and get in this position, right? Well, somebody taught you. Mm-hmm. So you have a responsibility to teach somebody else. Right. right. So in my life, there's been a lot of people. This guy may have put this nugget. This guy gave me this. But all of these things together help build my toolbox. So right. I have a responsibility to take the tools that I've been given to share it to the next kid. Right. right? And so sometimes I tell them, and they like, Mr. Justin, I want to grow up and be like you. I'm like, if you're learning at 13, what I'm learning at 35, you're going to go way further than me. Amen. Right? And a lot of men are not man enough to tell a kid that you can be bigger than me. Right. I want you to be bigger than me, right? I'm trying to get to this level, but I need to get you to my level so then I get to this level, get you, right? That's that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to train your successor, right? right? A lot of people don't look at it that way. I want my kids to go further than me. It's crazy saying my kids. These are my kids. I love them. We say I love you when we talk, right? right? I want you to get as far and much further than I've ever imagined going because you can do it. If I'm learning a lesson at 35 and you learning at 13, I'd be damned if you think you're going to only go as far as I did. Right. No. That's, that's big facts, bro. Yeah. That's, big, that's, that's, that's big facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so let me ask you this, man. And I think it's a great question for the both of us. But so do you want to be a dad one day? Like, is that something, is that, something <laughs> that, that, that you, that you want to dib and dab in? I do. Um, so being a dad, having a kid, I feel like is going to be the, the joy of my life. I think the problem is, I can't find a mother. (laughs) (laughs) Boy, look here, man. Look, bro, listen, I I, I ain't, I'm going to keep it a whole book, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, um, out of all the stuff I've been through throughout the military and college, bro, up until getting to Birmingham, bro, I've definitely had my issues when it comes to Making babies, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, I ain't going to act like I done made 20, 20 kids and nothing like that. But the crazy thing was, bro, one of the things my grandmama said to me before she passed away, she asked me, she said, baby, why why these women won't have these kids? What's going on? I was like, Grant, I don't know. 
I ain't paid for no abortions. I ain't took up to no clean. I don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but one of the things that my ex gave me, bro, she was willing mm -hmm. to be the mother of my child, bro. You know what I'm saying? Some unforeseen things happened that we didn't want to happen. But, bro, it, it, we wouldn't talk about no going to no clinics. We wouldn't talk about no abortion. We wouldn't talk about none of that, bro. So I ain't, I'm going to keep it a buck, bro. On on this past Mother's Day, that's I I had to celebrate her for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though we really don't we don't communicate, we don't talk. She really ain't got a whole lot to say to me, and that's cool, bro. I I know that I had to give her a space, but she made a difference because she was willing. You know what I'm saying? She was not like any other situation I've ever been in where it was immediately that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was okay. This is where we at now. So when you say finding a mama, mm -hmm. bro, like it's. it's it's especially in our situation, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because the overall the overall aspect of stuff is, is like you said, we've gotten to a point in age, we've gotten to a point in growth, we've gotten to a point in maturity, we've gotten to a point in finances, we've gotten to a point when it comes to our credit, we've come got to a point when it comes to our intellect, how we are looking at stuff, what we demand the results to be, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And bumping into something that meets that criteria. And then also on the flip side of it is willing to to, to bear a child, bro. At the age we at is mm -hmm. it's kind of like that, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to realize if we date close around our age, them women either got grown children or they about to be graduating high school mm -hmm. and they really don't want to start our way back over. You know what I'm saying? So we had to go a couple years down. So I get what you're saying about finding. They mama, you know what I'm saying? Tough. Like it's tough. And and for me, um, some of the problems I've had is I don't like to be generalized, right? Right. I'm Justin, right? But for some reason, a lot of the ladies that I've met have had a difficult problem of not being able to see me for their ex or somebody else or something they've heard about, where I'm extremely focused, I have a vision, and so if my platform begins to grow and there are more women that are quote unquote attracted to me or shooting their shot to be able to see, I'm truly focused on you. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not paying attention to that. Right. You're paying attention to that because maybe someone else went that way. Right. right? And so it's like, I need you to be healed from the traumas and the things that you've gone through because I've gone through some therapy sessions. I've done the work. Mm -hmm. I feel like, right. The work needs to continue, but I've done the work. Right. So if I'm here saying that I'm focused on you mm -hmm. and then you keep focusing on what ifs because this guy, that guy, y'all meant. Right. I hear this all the time. I hate the N word, but I have y'all you know, niggas. Y'all just baby. The only person at this table is me. Right. right. I'm not perfect, but God, I'm trying really hard. here. Right? <laughs> and it's like, damn, I can't get no. It's like, listen, mm -hmm, but when y'all say who is y'all like I'm just telling you that. I'm committed, mm, but I've heard that before. But he, I'm not him and he's not me, right? And it wouldn't be fair for me to conduct myself. So that's the part that is like, man, you know what? Maybe I don't even, I don't want nobody. But so, then it starts getting, damn, we're getting older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This house is real quiet at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it sucks watching these movies by myself. Yeah, yeah, like, no feet to roll up against. Going to these weddings by myself, traveling by myself. <laughs> it's like, damn, right? And then what sucks is, you guys go this way, and then they come back, right? And it's like, but you came back after something happened over there. Right. right. Okay, now I see you really. I tried to tell you that day one. I, I'm about to be 36, right. right? I'm not out here conducting myself the way I when I was 26. Facts. Right? And so even if you knew me then, or if you, if I, I've even had problems where, you know, hey, when I was in college, I said, so are you still? I said when I was in college, right? That's 10, I've been out of college. Don't, don't tell them how long we've been out of school. <laughs> yeah. We're already right. talking the ages and these numbers. Exactly. We ain't gonna tell them how long we've been out of school. But to see the evolve, the evolution of a man, and then to still try to hold him back to his younger self or hold him to what somebody else did is not fair. And that's just been one of the things that I've struggled with. And hopefully one day I'll get to a place where I'm able to find somebody that sees me truly. Gotcha. And I see her because it's difficult to try to fight an image that someone has in their head and they're not going to believe anything you say or do anyway because they've already made up that you're something that you're not. 
Got you. So what's the, what, what's the age group of, of your mentor group? 12 to 18. 12 to 18. So when your 16-year-olds are asking you for dating advice, what, are, what, what, what type of advice are you giving them at the age of 16? Uh, most of the advice that I give my young men is more on how they act. Right. Right. Not so much. I make sure that because a lot of times at that age group, the girls are acting a lot older than they are. Yeah. Like they're real silly and doing. So it's, listen, make sure that you respect her. Make right. sure that you, you know, teach them how to pull out chairs and compliment and how Silver. to be respectful. Those type things, right? Um, another thing is a lot of the kids, you know, they're trying to lose their virginity. They see these things. They're, they're on Snapchat. And so they're asking for pictures and different things like that. And So I'm real careful with those conversations because they can get themselves in a lot of trouble with pictures of these younger age girls on their phones, mm-hmm. right? And then sharing them and sending them out. But my biggest thing is respect for themselves and then respect for the women, right? So that's what I use. So that's the avenue I give them is making sure that, one, they're very respectful of themselves Mm -hmm. and then that they're very respectful of these young girls. Um, And outside of that, I bring them back. Because one thing that you have to do with kids or just when you mentor anybody is be truthfully very honest. So I tell them a lot of things. Well, listen, when I was 16, when I was 17... Right. And tell them some of the things that I did, some of the decisions I made and where it got me. Right. Right. Don't make this same decision. Yeah. Don't be yeah. skipping school. Don't be in the backseat of this car in this parking lot doing this and doing this. But if you are, right. let me tell you what you need to do. Right. You got things called condoms. Right. Right. They have these things. Right. Bring these girls home at a respectful hour. Right. All these things I may necessarily not have done. Right. But in this age, it's very important. Especially, I didn't grow up with. When we was teenagers, they didn't have Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram. So a lot of this gossip and screenshots and all these things that they dealing with now, mm-hmm. we wasn't dealing with. So my thing is I have to make sure that these kids are very aware of what they do, what they say, because everything is captured. Everything is brought back on you. So pay attention to what you say. Pay attention to how you talk. Pay attention that if you're going to talk to this young lady, make sure that you're respectful of her. And it's crazy because they're like, Mr. Justin, listen, learn from my mistakes. I done did a lot of stuff. I disrespected a lot of young ladies when I was a young boy. I had to learn a lot. A lot of girls have cried over some stupid shit that I did that I wish I didn't do. Don't you do it. Don't be that young man. Right. Don't be that young man. Don't be the one that's out here doing stupid stuff out in the cornfield in the middle of nowhere. Don't be don't be him. But I got corn for you in the home field. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> well, man, look, man, again, bro, you know, I, I appreciate you coming through, dropping gems, and, you know what I'm saying, just hanging out with us here on What You Mean Podcast, uh, especially for our Father's Day segments. And, again, for the people, if you skip through and, you know, you just came to this part, I don't, I don't know what you did. You know, hopefully you listened to it all the way through. But, you know, we definitely just covered the things that, you know what I'm saying, you don't necessarily have to be a biological father mm-hmm. to stand in that to stand in that place and stand in that, uh, I mean, in, the, in that gap, man, because uh, I, I definitely feel like um, I've definitely dated some single moms, bro, where that's exactly probably what made them the most attracted to me mm-hmm. was the interaction that they allowed for me to have with their children. You know what I'm saying? Because of the absentee of their of their father, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. So with that being said, man, I'm going to kind of turn the corner here, and uh, I'm just going to give you the platform one more time, bro. Uh, your camera's right there, and uh, just go ahead and look at the camera, man. Tell the, let the people know who you are one more time, man. Let them know where they can catch you at. Let them know what you got going on, how they can contribute right now. If you have anything going on fundraiser-wise or anything anybody can give to, you know, the foundation to help you out with what you got going, man, now's the time to let the people know. Okay, appreciate you. All right, so again, I'm Justin Lockett. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Life and Times JL. The foundation is the Jared Michael Lockett Foundation. It's J A R R O D Michael Lockett Foundation. Um, on Instagram is underscore JML Foundation. We're on Twitter. Our website is www.jaredmlockettfoundation.org. You can contribute there. We're 501c3. Everything is tax deductible. Just go out and see some of the things that we're doing. But not only that, I challenge you. I challenge you that if you see a young person, a young kid, a young man that's not doing something that they should be doing or doing something good, 
I want you to stand, you know, correct them, but also at the same time, commend them for the things that they do. Because each one of us can make a difference. No matter, it's nothing such thing as small or too big. All of us can make a difference in our own way. I appreciate that. That's what it is, good people, man. And you already know what it is, bro. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, man. Y'all already know who I am. I'm your boy, LeChester, man. I don't know what you mean, podcast. If you're listening right now and you have not subscribed and you're not following our podcast, man, go ahead and do that right now. Bump with us on Instagram, man. The good thing I did today on the Instagram was I added us a link tree. So every single link that's connected to everything that we're on and connected to, you can find it right there on our Instagram page, man. So make sure that you bump with us there. And as always, man, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until the next time, man, y'all hold it down. Be safe. And y'all already know. Peace.